I am unashamed. What about you? All right, I have exciting news I want to share. Every year since we were commercial fishermen, I have been running with the ops. Have I said, have I told this before? I think no. I don't remember if you described it as running with the ops, but you did talk about that you were going to do some fishing. I run, you know how these people. Are you referring to special ops? No, I'm re- <laughs> referring to op, I'm leaving to Phil to not know what I mean here. <laughs> <laughs> you you taught that me that seems this. to be a recurring <laughs> yeah. theme of the podcast. <laughs> I'm using the word ops as short for Opelousas catfish, oh, yeah, which is the talk about that. spotted about. color of a catfish that is at the top of the catfish world. We have talked about that before. They're in the Sea of Galilee, by the way, by the hundreds. So every year when they spawn, I get my nets out and. So you know, you're running with the ops is a reference to the people that run with the bulls. That's right in Spain. You I got, got you. you. I got. got it. It. I knew but where see, you. Were, I knew where you were going. Though. Here's the difference in me and those fools. <laughs> <laughs> they run with things that can kill them. I run with things that I can eat. That's the, that. That's it. That's why when people say, "Hey, let's go bear hunting." I'm like, "Nope, I'm out on that." Now I, uh, you know, if a bear comes running at me, I will become a bear hunter. <laughs> I don't care what the law says. <laughs> but other than that, I'm not going to seek that out. That's just, look, it's okay that people do that. I'm just, that's right. not me. I like to You run don't like hunting things. things that can then hunt you. Yeah, I just don't As like a general it. rule. As a general rule. That's why I don't, that's in my philosophy always was people trying to get me to ride on horses. And I was like, I understood when you had to ride them. Like, it made sense because you had to get yeah. around. and it made, But I don't like riding on things that have their own mind. Mm-hmm. And they outweigh me. You know, times ten. I just think that's a bad idea. Uh, I mean, I'm not against. Uh, people no. love riding horses. I'm all for it if you like that. But I'm saying for me personally, that just never clicked with me. I, I just thought, I'm never thought about with climbing. you. But I've always had a weird fascination with being in a western movie, which y'all probably know that about. Me. And look, I actually had a spot coming up until the coronavirus hit. Really. Our old uh, cinematographer, old Jim, that Willie oh, yeah. would make fun of, he was the older, oldest version of the team. I really like him. He's been He's, in hundreds. I mean, he has not been in. Uh, filmed. Filmed hundreds of movies that are world famous. And yeah. I, He's when he left guy. the last day, I said, look, you know, Duck Dynasty's over. We're moving on. He's going on to the next show. And look, he could be on any show, but he, he liked our show. And uh, yeah, he yeah. chose to hang with us because yeah. a lot of the crew kind of came and went through that whole time. But well, right. he and, was there for every episode. In right? that world, they yeah. use popular shows as a stepping stone. So they were you know, coming right and left because they're like, oh, well, once it became a hit. But he was here the whole time. And so he sent me a, uh, a text right before the coronavirus breakout. He said, hey, I'm, I, I think I got you a spot. And so we had started the process. And so, uh, I mean, I said, I don't care if, you know, if I get killed, like one minute in, I just want to be on the Western. So, I mean, find me a cameo where even if I have to die or just, you know, spit some tobacco or, you know, I mean. I Did wanna... you know I I was in a movie? I'm in, it's never, the movie never went. It's kind of like Torch Bear. But I was in a movie and got killed in the movie. Oh, really? Yeah. I've done this. Huh. Nobody ever knew. But it wasn't a Western. Wasn't a Western. Yeah. Well, I'm. It was, I'm, it was set in the 70s. I'm I played, sticking. I played a lawyer. Who got bumped off? It was a, it was about Roe versus Wade, and the and movie never came out. It just never released. I mean, it looked like it was going to. They had a trailer that you know it's got a bunch of big name actors, a lot of a lot of cameos. I mean, you were in there. Well, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they went big. We need a live. <laughs> <laughs> I so, think it may be my social media following that got me the gig, but anyway. So anyway, if it that, ever comes out, it's Roe versus Wade's the name of it. Well, Duck, best com- twenty two seconds of your life, Duck Commander. Uh, of course, everything's gone online. I know Willie's behind this because the store has been closed. So he's like, hey, we need to film you some doing what you do. <laughs> and I said, well, I thought you said I don't do anything. And he's I was going like, say, is he talking about you on the couch yeah. watching the stock market? Yeah. Are you at we the golf course? We all keep saying that. I don't <laughs> you know. So I said, well. That would be the most boring show on television. He said, what are you fixing to do? I said, well, I'm fixing to put my nets out because it's time to run with the ops, you know, 2020. 
And so he's like, well, every time you go, let me just call the cameraman. And so I've had these characters follow me around, you know. Because what I'll do, because then crawfish season is at the same time. So you take the, the coal fish, and then you catch the crawfish. And Phil knows the process. We've been doing this for years. So anyway, you know, great. Because everything's gone to social media now. I mean, that's you got Phil's show is out. Yep. People say, all of a sudden, Phil, you don't know this because you don't have an internet. But when people got quarantined and you doing a show about being quarantined, well, way more people are watching your show because everybody's quarantined. You see what I mean? So that was the idea, which, by the way, to the audience, In the Woods with Phil. So that's on Blaze TV. And, and this podcast that we're doing, uh, Blaze TV also is the one, reason why we're able to do it. So these guys have been great to us. They basically approached Dad and said, hey – you know, we got a lot of guys doing podcasts, political stuff, mostly day to day reaction stuff. But you know, we'd like to kind of have a, a, a biblical, spiritual voice on our platform. <laughs> yeah, you know, when they first asked me, I declined because I said <laughs> I'm not into politics. And they're like, No, no, you can That's you right. can be yourself and be. I was like, Oh, okay. Well, I'm. Then back. you find out it was Bible, and you're I, like, Yeah, I'm back in. <clears throat> so, so they they are the reason why. They were doing that. So it was two different shows. And, and sometimes I had, I want to spend a minute just clarify today because in the woods, you go to Blaze TV uh, and that's where you find it. It's in the woods with Phil and it's a subscription model. So you have to pay money for the year to be able to get the channel. So you got Dad's show, but then you also have 22 other shows Mark Levin, you know, Glenn Beck, a lot of other people as well. So right now they're offering not much longer, I think about another week. Uh, for instead of ninety nine dollars a year, which is what it costs to get the channel, you can get it for sixty nine, which is the biggest savings since I've been involved with these guys. And well, they're doing it because what else do you got to do? Well, right, and oh. they understand money's yeah. tight, so they want to try to get people crossed over. So right now, we're doing in the quarantine with Phil. It's a special series. It's been really interesting because oh, it's, it's a lot of the stuff that we learned, a lot of stuff we talk about on here as well. So anyway, just again, if you go there, blazetv.com. And then you can there's an inner you can enter code Jace or Phil you can either one of these guys use their name as the code and you get thirty dollars yeah. off so sign up it's a good, it's a good deal so can let me finish my story finish here. your deal so I is, refer to it as as the art of doing nothing because but you are doing something well I know that but I'm just saying he's recreated Seinfeld if you just you know move a move <laughs> a, a show about nothing. move a film crew. And say, well, let's let's film and just see what some people do. But Phil, well, you what, have, they're, what they're seeing is reality. I mean, I'm not. Well, you have you my have story. a you have a certain set of skills that in the wild that that is interesting. I I take it for granted because I'm around you, but I've had a lot of people. Evidently, they I didn't watch it, but I've I've heard the bit my whole life. See, I, I mean, haven't heard the scuttlebutt on it. Well, I heard the scuttlebutt because some of my friends that I play cards with, they're like, man, I never realized that there were there are three top leaves in the leaf, not industry, the leaf world <laughs> the, that are the leaf industry <laughs> that are the best when you're in a pinch, intestinal discomfort. That you can because you don't want any anal mischief. That was well, my, yeah. So, but I've had more people. Lot, look, that was my favorite. Part. They come up. They're like, "I love the podcast," but I'm gonna tell you, I learned something. You know, I'm. I mean, it's just lines like you know, I've never looked at a overcup leaf the same or whatever it was. Yeah. You know. So anyway, so people, you're educating people. That's good in these times. Which I, you know, I I told my wife. A that. lot of people thought it was a big joke, but they they don't realize. Well, right. I mean, if I'm in that position where I it's a full stop panic, and you see me running through the woods. Yeah. I'm gonna spend sixty seconds finding the best leaf around me. That's right. I will do that while I'm taking care of the well, business. I've been doing it for. 60, 70 years now. Was, you know, <laughs> so it's a good will of land. But so Dad was having a conversation with a reporter about this, about in the quarantine. Now she's, you know, a little chick from LA, does the, you know, whatever, the 411 or whatever her show is. And you're explaining this to her. So, I mean, but think about it in her mind. Dad. She's never known anything but a city and a, you know, a roll of toilet paper. So you were blowing her mind. With just the idea that you well, mean you could go it, in the woods. I was it's, raised in an era where I never laid my eyes on toilet paper. Yeah. It was a toilet 
a little wooden <laughs> structure a toilet paper with a hole in the ground, <laughs> and it was a board, and that had a roof, oh. but there was a board there, and it was a round, just a round hole in the board. Yeah, and the, the, it was just they just dug a hole. Well, they set the wooden structure over it, had a round hole. You said I don't, but all that was ever there that I saw was like a catalog of some sort. Sears catalog. The old Sears catalog and pages, and they'd tear out a page. But it wasn't the best toilet paper in the world. In fact, in my, I found leaves to be superior yeah, to, to the Sears the and Robot catalog. There was not enough. The, the Sears and Robot catalog was too slick. But a leaf on the bottom side. <laughs> you couldn't get a good adherence to the. Uh... <laughs> I think people think, well, well, surely not. But I'm just telling them. Oh, my so God. you'd rather have one of them old telephone books, you know. That's Sticky. right. Sticky. Sticky paper. That's what they should have done with that to get rid of all them instead of burning them. I mean, the bottom line is if you stay a lot of time, spend a lot of time in heavy woods, Mm -hmm. whatever you're doing, deer hunting, you know, trot lining, running nets. I mean, you know, if the water's up, it's a flood zone. So you're out there in a boat. Well, you're looking around, you're like, well, you know, sometimes you got to squat over the end of the boat in mm. some awkward positions. I it's mean, happened to I've me, walked but... logs, floating logs, and get on the end of them, take a dump off the end of the log. I mean, well, during high water, you have to you find know, you a, spend a lot of time you to find outdoors. a little mound. Like, I was looking, I had a little mound, but I mean, you talk about a precarious situation. You got waders sure. pulled down around your sure. ankles. Oh, yeah. And you're like doing a balancing but act. But it occurred like to me artist. If, if you were a person. Mm-hmm. A city dweller who had never even spent any time outdoors, maybe a hiking trail, but but even then, on a hiking trail, they're like, "Whoops, I got to go." Would you have any? Oh, uh, and now there's a law against well, stuff you, like that. Oh, if you spent yeah. a lot of time in the woods, like in an in, ordered in amount of time in the woods, which I have, you like you just learn to deal with things like. I mean, you know, look, I've been guilty of indecent exposure. You know how people get convicted of that in in the woods and water. They think it was some kind of joke I, I, I introduced into the equation, but spend a lot of time in the woods when it comes time for bathroom facilities. Yeah. You're going to have to make do on something other than a nice – I mean, we didn't have like a commode and and, and yeah. a bathtub, running water. I was, I was raised without that. <laughs> well, you know that so feeling I, when you're you're in a boat and you're like, okay, I have to go right now, and I can't make it to the bank. And then all of a sudden, you hear another boat coming, and then you're in a you're in a quandary. There, you're like, yeah, you know what? Your mind is trying to tell everything to hold on. But you, you can't just, hold you on. You just can't. You know, I just put my head down and say, you know what? It's a normal function of life. <laughs> Consider yourself mooned as you go by. In my particular case, <laughs> I have used the bathroom, as they say, outdoors more than I have indoors. That's now that's that a fact. is crazy. That's yeah. a fact. That's a fact. <laughs> that's why you have a show called In the Quarantine. When you can make okay. that statement. So you're qualified. You're qualified. So <laughs> hang on. Let's, let's take a break. <laughs> I was reading about these two guys, Kyle and Josh. They're both losing their hair, and male pattern baldness ran in their families. So this is a tale. I don't, you know, we got to think about this stuff. The way they dealt with their hair loss couldn't have been more different. Kyle kept putting off the hair loss treatment, while Josh went to Keeps.com for his hair loss treatment. So how do you think this story worked out? Any guesses? He kept his hair? He kept his hair. Oh. So Keeps offers basically a generic version of two FDA-approved hair loss products. They're the real deal. Um, you go there. You get an online consultation. Uh, you answer a few questions. This is what happened with Josh. A doctor evaluates it. You get your treatment. You keep your hair. I like it. Mm-hmm. So Keeps wants you to keep your hair and not leave the couch. To get started, you get half off your first order uh, because you're watching our podcast, half off. Go to Keeps.com slash door keeps.com slash door that's where you're going to check it out and keep your hair like josh i mean i started telling a story like an hour ago (laughs) (laughs) so i go out there i have the cameraman he's he's a real pale fella and i could tell 
he hasn't been outdoors much. And I'm I'm setting a tone here for what's fixed to happen. I'm fixed to give you this the, the new guy, the young guy at Duck Manor. Yeah, his name's yeah. Hunter. Pale well, they, means they, bright white, as yeah. I call him. He spent a lot of days in computer room. Yeah. And uh so because they said we'll just send you a ca- cameraman. I was like, what's his name? He said Hunter. I said, Oh, we're good there. Yeah. But it showed me that just because your name is Hunter, that doesn't that doesn't mean anything. <laughs> So, because, you know, you just, if you haven't commercial fished, and plus he has equipment, you know. Of course, first thing I did is put a life jacket. I said, you need to wear this. And he's like, no, I'm good. I was like, no, put the life jacket on. He said, why? I said, because they don't drag up people with life jackets on. That's right. He was like, oh. I said, you you fall out of the, out of the boat, you're dead. And and It's per- not, I hope you're good. You fall out. You're a dead man because the river's way and up. And then not only that, as we've learned from Doug Dynasty, production, equipment, and water yeah, don't go no. well together. People were had, were fired <laughs> multiple so, times. We were rescuing the film crew, and we did a great job <laughs> oh, to yeah. save that bunch. Yeah. yeah they came true. close to dying. We yes. have many stories on that. Uh, but uh, yeah. remember the guy that fell in the dock? You know, and he was, I, I was like, he's going to die of a heart attack. Just because of fear. You know, he was just wallowing around in the water. Because the water wasn't very well, it wasn't deep. But anyway, so <laughs> I I ta- I'd taken this fellow before, you know, we put the nets out. And so now we're, it's the payoff. And so I kind of came up with a good, a bad, and the ugly of the, the first day. Phil, Phil knows the good because he was here when, when I got back. But the good was the first net I ran, it was slim full. But it only had it was slammed full of blues, which meant I was a little deep, and because I don't want the blue cat, you know that's that's bait. But I had one when I looked down because you can see right below the water in the end of the net because I was telling the camera I said get up here, this is the money shot yeah, this here, is the one buddy. You want, right. <laughs> and uh, but you know he's looking around, and he just didn't he didn't understand what I was talking about. Too you bad know? they didn't have okay. a Fisher instead of Hunter. <laughs> yeah. So I had about a eight pounder, which is absolutely perfect perfect it can, eating size it can feed a family you know five to seven yeah mm-hmm. but it's the best so it's you you have plenty but it's the best you know quality that they get over about 10 and they start becoming coarse and rubbery so you want one i mean i'll eat one 15 or lower but eight is the magic so number. tell the audience an eight pound op would would uh produce how much meat Four half pounds, that, four four pounds, pounds of meat. dressed meat. You and get then half. M- most people eat about a half a pound. A uh, quarter of a pound. Yeah. So Well, if you have a fish, <laughs> fry, you say, how many fish do I need if I have 100 people coming? You say a quarter pound a person. If you got stuff with it, right. That's right. I hate to, to tell you this. When a first a guy told me that, and I said, no, they eat more. Because we eat I, I checked more. it through the years. If you're going to have a fish fry, yeah. you would think a quarter of a pound would not be enough. But I'm telling you, you but when you fish, think about it, like you'll a, have fish left over. A quarter pound burger is enough, and so I mean, we think about a quarter. But pound. But it does depend on when's the last time you ate one and how you feel about it. Because I had fasted, <laughs> I fasted the day I ran the net. Well, it doesn't cover it was, gluttony, uh, Jays. What is know? it? It was two o'clock, I guess. I went out there. Yep. Yeah, two or three o'clock, and so I hadn't eaten because just in case I had one. I'm, 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 we, we got reward money coming here. <laughs> and so, uh, I gave Phil half of the belly meat. There's two belly sections on the, which op, is the best part, which of is the best. I gave Phil one of them for the use of the boat and he volunteered to clean it, which was, was nice. The we pattern for me is got to make sure you give your mm-hmm. tithe to the, to so the, I hate to tell you this, Phil, I took the other two sides and the other belly meat, went home, cooked it all. And ate it all. <laughs> you ate it all? I ate it. Well, I told everybody, I said, hey, I got fried Opelousa's cat. That's a lot of op. <laughs> and the only person that was interested was Karina, my Nicaraguan daughter, I guess. And, uh, but she, you know, I, gave, I just kept going back in. And, and, you know, after a while, 10, 15 minutes, I thought, I, I guess she don't want So me. you had two pounds of op plus the, plus the, uh, what you scraped off the backbone and all that. Mm hmm. Yeah, it was awesome. <laughs> so that was the good. So uh, the bad was my next net, I go up there. I go to the limb where it's tied. Wasn't tied. Uh-oh. I said, hmm, no rope. So then, to make a long story short, we have a drag. It it look It's a hook that has four prongs. I think you made it, didn't you? 
or had it made. Some guy in Texas built it for me. And it's perfect for dragging up, the dragging up rope. So, of course, and then it got hung. We went through all that. I mean, you know, it, it and so the guy's like, is this normal? You know, I'm with the cameraman. I'm like, <laughs> Just relax here, buddy. <laughs> well, I could not find the rope because the current is so strong. I just couldn't get it. So finally, I said, well, I know I can get the net. I went to the tail line and felt the rope. I didn't want to run it from the tail line because you dump all your fish yep. on the way. So finally, I hung on to the front of the net. It's my net. I thought, you, you don't want to do that because you don't want to tear your net. You got to repair it. Yeah. So, But I'm like, you got to get the net. And so I finally got it. And uh, so this took thirty minutes, you know, and it's your. So you're now filming a mini series for. Oh Duck yeah, Duck. that's just gotten, you know. <laughs> this, and this uh, is war and peace. <laughs> so that was bad because now it's kind of embarrassing because that guy was like, "Oh, this was easy, you know. First net, boom, jackpot. Here we go. Next net, you know, a lot of whistling." Well, Phil knows what what I'm fixed to say that when I these bubbles started coming up, well, that's bad because something's dead. In, in this net and it just it popped up like shoo, like a buoy coming from underwater and it was about a 40 pound alligator gar Ooh. that had turned mm. he had died in the process and he was had some a green tint behind each yeah. gills which leads to the ugly is, i can smell it in my in my mind right now <laughs> From all the years we fished. Okay. When you have a small <laughs> net and you get a gar that's that big, it is literally almost impossible to get him out because he's dead. If he was alive, it would actually oh, help. Because a gar, you know, is a, is an unusual fish. The details of you know in the creation is what led me to being a believer in God. You know, and hearing the story of Jesus because. You see a gar, you know, he's a strange fish. His scales are not like other scales. His his scales will cut you. Oh, it's, yeah. it, it, they're they're, sharp. it's an armor. And they also can breathe. They're one of the few fish that can breathe water and air. I don't know if y'all knew that. Oh, yeah. That's why they and, come up to the top. So, so these people that don't believe in God, they're like, see, there is a link, you know. And I'm like, no, they're – they're the the image of why this didn't just happen out at, of at sea water. They're so vastly different that you're like, hmm, you know, how did this happen? Why? And, and big ones look like alligators. I mean, you oh, know, because yeah. Dad caught one about 175 pounds one time. I was with him that day. It Remember, looked we like caught, an alligator. We caught the 100 bass. But, you know, I've His read. snout was, you know, what, two, a foot and a half wide. Caught some big ones. Yeah. I think the biggest they've ever caught is 330 pounds. It was like 10 or 12 foot long. But anyway, you got to get this thing out. And what you have to do, it's a barbaric process because you have to basically break his, his jaw off, the teeth, which, which I learned very from sharp, Phil. too. Oh, they're razor sharp. Razor. If you touch it, what's amazing is we, I, you know, swam in the river my whole life and run. But gar, they're not aggressive. I, I've never like been in fear for my life. Yeah. They look bad, but, but they're they. But look that hundred pound gar we caught, or hundred and forty pound. I mean, that thing could have eaten you. I mean, it was oh, yeah. that big. But we don't really view them as uh, yeah, as, as scary. But they will cut you. But what happens is. When you go through the process of getting the gar, the ugly part is this thing gets all over you. I mean, when I walked in the house. A lot of slime. When I walked in the house, Missy said, good, what's that smell? I said, that'd be a dead gar. Of course, I knew at that moment, you know, because we've gone through the process, she's out. Oh, yeah. You, you said, know what I mean? Cause you, you, you pursued the wrong fish for you romance. You don't remove the smell of a dead gar <laughs> after you get them out of the net with one shower. Fresh, this is this is five showers. Fresh, crappy romance. Sometimes dead it takes gar. a few days. It takes days. <laughs> dead gar is going to sleep on the couch, Jace. So, anyway, to make a long story short, that – it's good times because that has begun. So it, was it, that the ba- good? The was that the bad or was that the ugly? The bad was that. Uh, I was wondering if you covered all three there. Oh, I had the good and the ugly. I didn't have the bad. Uh, Here was the bad. I, all right, I, hang on. Let's take a break because I got to hear the bad. Got to get the stat because we got. Then I want to talk about Eastwood because that's where that phrase comes from. So I had a great call with Doctor McQuillan. Uh, from Omega XL. This is the product, Omega XL, and really learned a lot about 
inflammation and how it affects you. This is and this is important for our See, age. The group. difference in me and you is when I run and like race the dogs or whatever I do in my normal day, I realize the problem of inflammation. I don't have to read a book. I just take off running and I was like, Yep. I know about inflammation. <laughs> well, just, and I quit raising dogs years ago, so mine more happens from sleep and you know sitting on the couch too long. There you go. So basically, it's the root cause of most of our back, neck, shoulder, and leg pain, mm-hmm. uh, and it causes a lot of long term problems. So they've got all these topical things you can do. So this these guys have come up with something interesting, and I'm taking the product. I'm uh, probably about. A little over a week into it. And so the doctor told me in two weeks I'll be able to tell the difference. I can tell a little bit already, but we're going to mm-hmm. see uh, if this uh, helps me or not. So it's backed by 30 years of research. And what's interesting, Dad, is it comes from mussels. You know, like you think about mussels in the Freshwater ri- mussels or saltwater Well, mussels? these are saltwater, because, and they're farmed in New Zealand. Huh. And so they grow them on these vines. They, they farm them on these vines that are around them, like 90 meters, pretty deep. Have you ever tried one? A muscle? Yeah. I've tried a freshwater muscle. Yeah, I don't care for it. Wasn't much. Yeah. But they, but they, they, you would, you would think that's the way you want your body. See, so the concept worked, you know, for me to understand it. So that's why I'm taking the product. So I'll I'll definitely get you future updates on that. Well, good. So we want you guys to check it out. Uh, Like me, Omega XL, healthy immune response. That's what we're looking for. So he got a special offer. You order now, you get your second bottle free. So that's pretty good. You get the first Mm -hmm. bottle. You get second one free. Uh, for more information, you go to OmegaXL.com, OmegaXL.com slash Phil, or you can call them 800-844-4888. 800-844-4888 is the call or OmegaXL.com. Check it out, slash Phil. Now, here's the bad. I, I saved it for last because uh, <laughs> Phil don't know this. What happened was when I got back to the bank, well, I was distracted because this guy said, "Hey, let, let's do a you know a shot, a wrap up shot." I said, "What do you mean? We we just wrapped it up." I said, "Don't try to plan all this. You you follow along. You know, we get so to your an camera op- guy just went to Martin Scorsese. Well, he's today. like, let's go with the truck. You know, I'm like, I'm not a hey guys. You know, it's been a great day. I, I'm just not that type of guy. You just film what happens, and so we kind of got into an argument. I was like, "Hey, turn the Shocker. camera. On. I can't believe you would get into an argument." I said, "Watch this and." I grabbed the Yeti ice chest with the op in it because I put that in the ice chest. I said, because you don't want anybody else to see this, you know, because it's mine. And then I, I tore off up the bank with it, you know. And he's like, but you didn't say anything. I was like, no, that was – you wanted a closing shot. That I had to get up the bank, and I took my fish. That was it. Don't need to say anything. I'm going to go clean it. So he comes out. You know, we go up. We clean the fish, you know, with – we feel and you know we forget about that you said well where's the bad well i get halfway home and it hit me that i got so distracted by that cameraman i thought i don't think i tied that boat back up and so i called dan's butler because i didn't want to call phil because i knew he would have a fit (laughs) Uh Uh (laughs) you just went back to being about 12 years old. i said dan i said i think something bad has happened i think that i pulled up got the op out cleaned the op Went on my way, and I don't think I ever, I ever tied the boat up. I said, "Now the good news is it feel headed, and it was kind of in shallow water. There's Some a lot of trees, yeah, trees around, around there." I said, "It may still be there." I said, "But if you go down there and it's not, it would have been hard to come out of there right there where that was." Yeah, I like? said, "I'm gonna turn around and come back <laughs> because I'm pretty sure that's halfway to the Gulf of Mexico now." Because <laughs> <laughs> if it ever got going down the river, oh yeah, I said we're gonna need a speedboat. But anyway, but I really thought I had. I just thought just in case. Oh, he he called me back later. He's like, good call. You didn't tie the boat up. Ooh. And, uh, but he, he said it had hung on a little group of trees, and he fished it back. So back in the up. day, that would have been that would have been some licks. So it that, was bad because it was kind of embarrassing. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, yeah. You know, I used You're the Phil, pro. I used Phil's <laughs> boat. But I got distracted by this cameraman. You know what I mean? Let's get his money shot, a parting shot. That's what caused all the problems. My frustration. Back to, back to last podcast, you talk about assessing blame. Poor Hunter now is taking all the blame for your lack oh, of. Wow, that's idiotic. You know what I mean? <laughs> we we just have one of the greatest things that people can see. I'm running with the ops, and now you want to ruin it by getting on the edge of the boat and talking about it. It's just so People have, who have never eaten Opelousa's cat 
would not realize what Jace is saying. They would say, oh, you're some guy talking about a fish. If certain, But if you never eaten them, yeah. Yeah, you, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't appreciate I was trying to think that if somebody we had down, I don't remember who it was, on a book project or something, and they had never – you know, we got up and so they went over and ate that op, and they just like they couldn't believe it. They were like, "There's something that tastes that good. That yeah. where does it? How do I get it?" And you're like, "Oh no, there's no. You would have to go fish to get it." You know, yeah, to, I caught a ten pounder yesterday. <coughs> ten pound op up there. So you, you you mentioned the good, the bad, and the ugly. Uh, Marsha, uh, one of our uh, listeners. And I love it. She's got the episode. Episode 61, Phil made a statement that Clint Eastwood said, I like my chicken fried. Jace didn't really believe him, so she looked it up. So now, Marsha, you went you went to bat here. She said, please tell Phil it is true, and it comes from the movie High Plains Drifter. That's the reason I didn't know it, because if you ranked all the Clint Eastwood westerns, I got that one down at the bottom. Do you want to take issue with that? No. Oh. It, it's, okay. it was. It wasn't it – was, wasn't much, but yeah, <laughs> but it that, wasn't one of our favorites. But it is, yeah. you, you remember the line, but it was a no, good line. Well, it Something. made me think, and you just mentioned about the with the camera guy. So, dad loved Eastwood movies, and it transferred to us because you know we would watch them. Well, that's all there was to watch. <laughs> yeah, you gotta I, remember, people forget that when I was raised, you know, you had three channels, and two of them were fuzzy. No, I mean, you know, now they all everybody, went to, yeah. they all went to color code about 11 o'clock at night. You know how you see these movies and you don't think they're realistic, but we were the people that <laughs> Phil would holler through the window. We literally, I was, a, there was a many a time I was on that roof and he was like, over a little bit to the left. No, nope, no, nope, too far, too far. Go back to the right. You know, and I, I mean, just that, to get. Straightening the antenna to pick it, pick the reception. It, yeah, you had to have it. Talking. I remember the best thing I ever that you guys ever. This was bought. pre cell phone, pre internet. You remember this, Chase? There was one that you could. They bought a thing and hooked it up to the TV and the antenna, and it electronically you could turn it and it would sync them up together. It was like I thought it was magic. Like to mm-hmm. me, I thought it was you know something from heaven has fallen down there because then you didn't have to go out and turn anymore because it had a little automatic tuner. That you could. Yeah. I remember when you y'all bought that. Yeah, when I was we little. changed stations, you had to go out and turn the antenna. So no, not could. we. That would be me. <laughs> yeah, you were the man. <laughs> and I thought, me too. I had forgotten that, Jace. <laughs> but look, you know, here's what's funny about this. As dangerous as it was up on that roof, you know, we. <laughs> I'm like, because <laughs> I look back on it. Now, I mean, at the time, I thought my dad told me to do it. Yeah, I did. What we did. We climbed. Then up. I thought, you know, I mean, he's risking my life. <laughs> <laughs> is on the line. Uh, you probably just would have broke a leg or something. You know? I don't Look, know if it was really risky. The biggest argument Willie and I ever got into was over a Clint Eastwood baby. Because back when Duck Dynasty hit, you know, we were hiring and firing all these people. Well, I had, I would tell people that was in the duck call room because I was in charge. And I'm like, I tell Willie, you stay out of here. You don't know a duck from a billy goat as far as sounding, which he doesn't, you know? I was like, this is my domain. Stay away. And so, but some of these guys, they would hire these young bucks. They had never seen Outlaw Josie Wells. And so I said, if you don't watch that movie, you tonight, can't work here. You cannot work here. You're fired. <laughs> well, they laughed, you know, and look, I'm just looking at them. I'm not kidding. Well, one of the fans goes and tells Willie that. Willie, like, calls me. It's the only time he's ever called me into his office. He's like, I know you're joking, you know, but I was like, no, I'm not joking. <laughs> And he's like, what is your point? I said, my point is half of our conversation in that duck call room revolves around that movie. Or lines from the movie. This guy's going to be clueless, and I don't want to deal with the frustration. And it's just <laughs> idiotic. It, the movie is an awesome movie about life. The man, you know, Eastwood was done wrong. It reminds me just a lot of things about life. He starts trying to find justice and then he picks up all the other people that were oppressed and it just kind of reminded me of my childhood. For some it's reason. interesting too because it's one of the first ones <clears throat> that he directed himself. You know, up until that point of his career, you know, mostly he was just an actor. But it's not the first one, but it's the first one he pretty much just helmed the whole thing. He mm. said, I heard him somewhere and he said that out of all of me made the movies, that was his favorite. It's it's our awesome. favorite for sure. Look, man. I've actually used those words of life and words of death in a spiritual. Oh, uh, I do yeah. spiritual. He's talking to the Indian chief there. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Tin bears. He said, Tin bears said, well, this we we already have. He said, I ain't promising you nothing extra. <laughs> 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 he was just saying, I'll die with you, I'll live with you. Ain't nothing extra here. <laughs> anyway, don't get me started because I'll go through the whole movie. You can do a whole episode. Which my, my lovely wife, she doesn't like the movie because I can't be quiet during the movie. I say the lines before he says oh, them. Oh, boy, you're one of those. I can't yeah. help it. <laughs> It, it, uh, I told her, I said, I cannot. Who's your favorite character in the movie? I mean, other than Eastwood, who's your favorite? I mean, the outlaw Josie Wells is more about the movie. The the good, bad, and the ugly. I mean, my favorite character of all time is Tuco. Oh, yeah. Just because. He was good. Eli Wallach. Oh, it just. I mean, I think that's one of the greatest movies. He should have won an Academy Award. Maybe dead. I don't know. No. But it, but they didn't. Awesome. Back in those days. They they were unfair because they were foreign films, you know, because they filmed them in yeah. Italy, and so they didn't even get the right recognition. But I mean, overall, I love it. But Lone uh, Wadi is mine, by the way. Who <laughs> else? I mean, the old Indian. Oh, uh, he, that that whole <laughs> scene with him about his, you know, he said, "I never surrendered, <laughs> but my horse did." But my horse did. I hear he's. <laughs> because that that's so how we are, though. He's you know, put on a wagon up in Kansas. Yeah. <laughs> And he said, I don't have any food, but all I got is a piece of red. Hard rock candy. Yeah, candy. But it's not for eating. It's just for looking through. Because it's all the things that we talk about in my childhood. And these were, that's why I liked that movie. It was things that we kind of did, you know? Well, and it came out during our childhood. I think it was 70, mid 70s, maybe. Is when yeah. it was came out. So well, a lot of well, reminiscing here, but uh, so, well, I wanted so to when say when we get this. to the point well, of hang, hang no, on, I, hang on, I, let's take a break and then we'll let you make your point. Yeah, I guess Jace would be familiar with it. Well, yeah, I don't know about Dad. Back in your Go day, did you have the SAT and the ACT? Back oh, in, yep. I have yep. a horrible story about that. <laughs> the test. Yeah, I thought if you didn't answer all the questions, you wouldn't be penalized. So I only answered the ones I knew. <laughs> Bump. I had like an eight first time I took it. <laughs> I'm not surprised. What you may not know about, you know, this idea about the college board, by the way, Dad, guess who controls it? Leftist. You know, so it's not always, you know, the best way to be able to understand, but it's all we've ever had. Every test I've ever taken pretty well, C+. Plus. C+. Plus. Well, I wouldn't be bragging about C that. Plus. I'm, <laughs> well, I'm saying... <laughs> I'm smarter than half of them, dude. Well, I am proud of that. <laughs> well, well, that's a good way to look smarter at it. Smarter than half of them. Half of them are smarter that's than me. If, if I'm in the middle, I'm happy. <laughs> but that's if half the people made better than a C. That's right. So here's so here's the deal. Usually it's A B C D. You F. guys, no. you, you guys yeah. will be glad to know this. There is a new test. Somebody that's trying to muscle in on the SAT and ACT. Yep. It's called the CLT. It's a classic learning test. And they make themselves available to people, students that have been at home, you know, homeschooled, all these different ways to come into the stream and process. Obviously, they're kind of trying to get pushed out. So a lot of people don't know about this test, the classic learning test. It's been used by tens of thousands of students, hundreds of colleges. It provides the most accurate and rigorous measure of academic hmm. formation, accomplishment, and potential. Better tests create better students. That's do you have to answer all the questions? You do have to answer all the questions. I need to retake this and see where I'm at. The best, I, I think a C-plus in the 60s is much stronger by the time you get to the 2020. <laughs> we, have to, we have to put that no, in the test. I'm going to disagree with that <laughs> yeah. completely. I, well, think, I think the testing and the, the, the acumen has dropped. Phil, you can't turn on a computer. <laughs> and I mean, what that's, shows you the F. brilliance of a C plus mind, dude? Well, unfortunately, you have answered correctly. If, unfortunately, Dad couldn't take the CLT because you would have to have a computer. The good, oh, the good out. news is, uh, while ACT and SAT are canceling tests like crazy because of COVID nineteen, these guys are still doing it. In fact, if you'll if you'll go uh, and check out their website cltexam.com and do it quickly. You want to do it before the April 29th because you can still take the test uh, to be able to get into a college. So cltexam.com it can be taken from the comfort of your own home on a computer, which dad couldn't do. cltexam.com check it out uh, check it out before April 29th and, uh, mm. and get on this thing, if you, especially if you're trying mm. to get into college. That C plus turned into an F. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha.
I wanted to say this. I mean, Phil, it's kind of a big deal when we start running with ops. And I threw in the evidence about the guard just that you see in creation. But also, I'm with Al. We read some of these comments. Al sends me some of them. And I think what you got to realize is if you go through the Bible the way we have, there's a tendency to miss the forest for the trees. You know, we went through John 4 last time talking about, or I'm not sure it was the last time, you know, because I don't know (laughs) how these are aired. But, and I thought a lot of these people, they have these questions that seem uh, so small to me. I mean, and, and it's like when I look at the religious world and you see all the denominations and people are, they try to to find groups of people that they agree with. And that's what amazes me about a lot of the comments we, we get. It's like this endless journey to agree, to try to agree on, on everything. every principle of the Bible. And I got news for you. It ain't going to happen. And so some of the questions to me are almost embarrassing because I'm like, it's not that big a deal. That's not that big. You're making this a big deal. And so it hit me. I thought, you know, when we went through the story with the Samaritan woman, the point Jesus basically was making was that because the argument that came up at the end on where we worship and it's not going to be a place and, you know, the point he was making is, I am Jacob's well. Right. He was saying, there's living water. I'm the well. I'm the water. We didn't say that, you know, but we said it in John, is it one or two? You remember the in one where he was talking about with Nathaniel. And remember we went back to Genesis and he was seeing Jacob's ladder and we made the point. He said the same thing. Yeah. I'm the ladder. I'm where heaven and earth meet. I'm the image of God. Same thing with the Samaritan woman, and you're going to see that over and over and over. Where we're getting to next, he makes a a statement in John 5, in verse 39, it says, you diligently, and we'll get into the details in the future, but I just want to make the point. You diligently study the scriptures because you think by them you possess eternal life. And I want to stop there because these questions that I'm addressing, it's arguments over scriptures or how you interpret scriptures or what you think the scriptures say. Or what you were taught. Yeah, or, yeah what, you, what you were taught. But no, notice the second part of 539. These are the scriptures that testify about me, yet you refuse to come to me to have life. Here's my point, and I, I, I want to – share something about the Samaritan woman that I I think you'll find fascinating with what happened Sunday. My point is, my goal is to agree on Jesus. He is the image of God. If you want to get to know God, you got to go through Jesus. Let's agree that Jesus is the Son of God. He is the beginning, the end. He's the resurrection. He's life. He's the truth. What do you say? I'm the way. I'm the well. I'm the ladder. You know, and he's in us. And we introduce him. Let's agree on that. Everything else, I'm not worried about. I, I'm really not. I, what if I'm wrong? You know, because what what seems painful about religion is that people will come up with little statements. They're like, so so when you said this. I mean, did you mean this? You know, and I'm thinking, does it? I can't even remember what I meant. Like, you know what I said? It's like, are you? It sounds saying, like a. It sounds like a President Trump news conference. You know, every conference is the little jots and tittle about. You know, three weeks ago you said this. Did you mean everything that? is scrutinized? Scrutinized to the nth degree. Instead of the big picture, we're trying to take a virus. I mean, you know, it just kills me watching. So here's 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 what I wanted to say. I. I Al has no idea that I wanted to do this, but I wanted to do it. We Sunday, you know, we have our virtual service now, and uh, Mike was going to preach. He he talked a little bit and he showed a video, and the video I had never seen before. No, you had never seen that. Uh, I'd never seen that. Yeah. So you you know you yeah. had seen it. Before. I had seen it before, so but I hadn't my, seen it a long time. It was my aunt Jan who she went to be with the Lord. What a few few about a year ago? Yeah, about a year ago. Well, she was being interviewed, and they were in John 4, oddly enough. 
And the reason I said I wanted to make a point before I get back to the video, when you read John 4, and and the whole conversation started with Jesus saying, will you give me a drink? You know? And uh, basically, I know she looked back on that as, you know, her life-changing moment. She had been had all these relationships, none of them worked, but she found the real man, you know, yeah. in, in, in Jesus. And at some point, it it probably dawned on her that he was pursuing her. She she was despite all her baggage and problem. You know she she was a she was a thirst quencher here. And the reason I'm saying that is because when you go to Acts chapter eight, because we know what happened. You know she she has this conversation with Jesus, and then she takes off and starts. Because, you know, it says she went to all, you know, the men and started telling them about the man, which was Jesus. Well, when you get to Acts 8 and Philip, all of a sudden, persecution comes out because Saul is persecuting the church. And, well, he goes down to a little place called, where in verse 4? Samaria. Mm -hmm. 4 and 5. And I I don't want to read it all. I just want to say that. The bottom line was a lot of people came to the Lord. But I know what happened in John 4 set the tone for what happened in Acts 8. Because I know that's how God operates. And to get back to the video. Hang on, let's take one last break before we do that. To get to the video, what they did was the first person that came up was my Aunt Jan, which was kind of moving for me because I hadn't seen her, you know. Because she's obviously <laughs> and I wasn't prepared heaven. for that because yeah. <clears throat> I didn't participate Sunday, so I was watching it like everybody else, and I had seen the video, and Mike had even told me he was doing the video, but I hadn't seen it in a long time. So when her face popped up on that screen and she started talking about it, I mean, I immediately got yeah, emotional. It was emo- and got, then Bill Smith was the next guy. Well, that's where I was going. So then they had Bill Smith being interviewed. It was very the cinematography was well done. Yeah, it, was it was a really very well good production. Well, Bill Smith, you said what? Well, she went to Bill Smith. Bill Smith went to you, and they told the story about... He was our preacher at the time, back in the day. With yeah, the he said, where's, she, where's Phil at? And he's like, well, he's at a bar. And he's like, well, I guess I'll... It was interesting hearing his take. I'd never heard him comment on that. He's like... Well, he kind of he kind of <laughs> mixed the story up a little bit. But he yeah. said, I, I guess I'll go, go see him at the bar. But anyway, and so then they go to Phil, right? right? Yeah. And so, because that's... You heard Jesus, your sister took advantage of the situation of you and mom being separated and having all the problems and you having the, you know, problem with drinking and, all, you know, all that was But to she that. knew your potential. That's right. That's what she talked about on the video. And she, she fought was- and she went to a guy who wasn't scared of anything, which is Bill Smith, who's also in heaven. Yeah. And so, here, you know, and then, then came you and you tell the story that they had just told. Well, then... You introduced Mac Owen, who is the director. He's the national director, or, or I think he's the hemisphere director of Celebrate Recovery. I mean, he's over every CR. And, and Because you help, you know, bring him to the Lord and kind of train him. You know, that was a long story. You can watch the video. You can go back and see the WFR Sunday, and, and you'll see yeah, what WFR I'm talking about. WFRchurch.org, if you want to watch bring, it. Bring you Kleenex. <laughs> it's touching. And... uh and then they moved to Chad Johnson, who was a younger guy, who, a guy I love and, and have been a part of, you know, his process also. And Mac trained him. Well, we all did. But, well, right. Yeah. But And you say, well, what is all this? What, what is your point? What does all this mean? What does this have to do with the Samaritan woman? What does that have to do with arguing about religion? What, what they showed there and what happened in John 4 is what happened. When you're introduced to Jesus, that's when your life changes. Things that matter now change. You get God's spirit. You, you know, you then become a vessel in which other people hear about Jesus. And the ramifications of that are amazing. Yeah. You just think if Jan would have just kept her mouth shut and, you know, stayed home and watched TV or whatever and said, you know, to heck with him. He, my brother's terrible. He's yeah. a lost cause. I got cause. a brother who's a drunk. Yippee. He's, I mean, well, lost yeah. cause. And so now you see, I mean, you fast forward this through, I mean, Phil, I, you know, it's kind of awkward bragging on you, you know, in this setting, but you fast forward, you have brought, you know, tens of thousands of people to Jesus 
But what they did on the video and what happened here in John 4, that's why, I th- you know, I had this thought, and I know we kind of moved past it, but I wanted to to share it with the podcast is because, number one, it shows you you're never too far gone. The most important thing. Yeah, for God to rescue you. Number two, God uses other people to step up mm-hmm. and share Jesus. And that she used, you know, you use somebody like Jan. But then when you look at it, what happens, it may be something in the distant future, but tens of thousands and throughout all generations, people will, will come to Jesus, and it's these little moments. It's these little conversations. It's little decisions that God uses to really unleash his power. Well, something else that was not on the <clears throat> video Sunday, but I'll just tell you if you guys go watch it. So the thread of interviews are the people Jace mentioned. But all the people that you see on the video, there were probably 100-plus people that are in the room while they were filming it, and you see them kind of smiling and talking. Every one of those had been led to Christ by someone in that line of mm-hmm. people that did interviews. That was just local people that they pulled together you know, Amazing. quickly to film. So I thought that was powerful because it, you're right. It takes you back to that Samaritan village. And I hadn't thought about the link over you know, when, when uh, Stephen was there. Yeah, um, you know. <laughs> yeah, I gave a thumbnail of that, but you you dig down yeah, in, into good. that. That's Look, it, it it's good, good stuff, it, and it illustrates the point. You say, "What's that got to do about arguing religion?" Because the point is, and y'all have heard preachers say this many times, but it's true. What we are in Christ, you know, we no longer live. God looks down; He sees Jesus. That's, you know, Galatians two twenty. I've been crucified with Christ; I no longer live. You know, Christ lives in me, and we're a movement. We're not a monument. We're not a building that sits around and argues with other buildings about little things that may, you might be right or wrong. You know, I hope God gives us a spirit of wisdom to find it out. Look, we study and we we do this podcast to talk about things and, you know, go down rabbit holes. But if you miss Jesus and the movement aspect of him being shared and how that affects people, people's real lives and communities well you just missed it right you know so i'm saying i'd rather have more comments like that than i would what do you think about you know are you, were you saying that it, it's just so small of, of a thing is it wrong to you know eat in the sanctuary or you know it's just stuff like that right. that seems so trivial that if they start with the question do you think it's right and then they'll tell you whether you do you do you yeah. think it's right to, and then they'll give you whatever they think is right or wrong, and they want to hear what you say, and then the argument starts. All right. It, well, and I've answered several, and that have led with that, and and I always answer the same way. Paul said clearly, the acts of the sinful nature are obvious, and then he tells you what they are, and there are a few lists throughout the New Testament that tell you when you have to build a case for something to be wrong or sinful, you're already going out. You're you're putting yourself out on a big limb, or or out if you try to figure out what group you're with and then put them in a box and say, "Well, oh, you believe this." I've had people do that, you know, and because they're like, "No, what group are you with?" I'm like, "I'm with God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit." You can take that as singular or plural; doesn't matter to me. (laughs) There's a mighty throng. In fact, every last one of them worldwide, a mighty throng. And they've all gotten together, and they go all the way back into someone's past. Their mind would be one where they would start and say, boy, look what we found. Look what kind of sinful fellow we found here. The ones who are looking for the sins of others, and they're going all the way back to their junior high years, (laughs) trying to come up with something— they're all sinful themselves, right. every one of them. And they say, let's go back into this one's life and that one's life and the other one's life. Let's go back and see about the drunkenness and them right. Look at what we have. And they always drag it up thinking somehow. I don't know whether they do it because it makes them feel better because they know they're sinful too if they're honest with themselves. Like, well, you know, how's your young life been, junior high, high school? Now you're 50 years old. How's it been going? I mean, made any mistakes on the way there, lady? I mean, you just get to thinking about it, Al, and you say, or what's, what was written I, they in your tell yearbook? me that the Internet 
is that. It's just Social a Social media is that too. Yeah, someone told me said, Phil, don't ever don't ever make the mistake of tuning clicking on to the internet because <laughs> there are a lot of people trashing you, dude. It's it's pretty brutal. So well, you, it's awesome that, So how do you take that? Jace is is pretty well on it right there. Well look you come to if, Jesus because he's removed your sins. God sees his son in us. Others say, Well, how could you believe in someone you've never seen? You've, have you seen God? I've said, no. So you've never seen this God. You dreamed him up. I said, no, I didn't dream him up. I just read this, these letters, and these letters are supposedly came from heaven, <clears throat> and I've read them, and I've run up on this God that I've never seen. The only speaking to me he's ever done is through these letters, you say, well, how in the world? And you expect me to believe that, have faith in something? Uh, I'm like, do you see the coronavirus? All the deaths that it's causing, all the misery and the economic slowdown. Have you seen it yourself, the coronavirus? And they're like, well, no, but I mean, I said, well, how do you know it's here? And they say, well, I just see what. I just see what's happened. So so you are viewing the deaths that come about. So only a handful have looked under a microscope and said, we can see the coronavirus. 99.9% .9 of the human beings on Earth, they can't see the coronavirus, but they see the results of it. Right. Jace is making the point, when you see the results of someone's life, oh, you can see God. You can see God there, or you see someone yeah. else there. You see what I'm saying, Al? Don't try to and figure out what mountain she was on. Try to figure out that if Jesus can use this woman, oh, he can use anybody. That's right. To Put take yourself. over a town. Put yourself in her shoes. A drunken, immoral, heathen like myself. That's you right. say, well, who in the world would have ever thought you would have made the turn? It is what it is, Al. It is. It is. Good stuff. So we're so glad you guys were with us today. You can subscribe on iTunes or Spotify or YouTube or Facebook. And be sure and rate us on iTunes so that other people can know about the podcast.